So uh, I'd like to now hand over to Emma Pudney. Uh, Emma heads up the AWS business unit here in Australia and Emma will, will be delivering the presentation today for you. So take it away. Thanks, Emma. Hi, everyone. Uh, so yeah, as um, Craig said, I'm head up the AWS business unit for Rackspace here in ANZ. And today I want to take you through what our service offering looks like and some of the benefits associated with that. And certainly as you indicated, please feel free to put any uh, questions that you might have into the chat box window and I'll make sure I address them at the end. So moving through to the first slide. All right, cool. So the first piece that I'll, I'll go over is just a really brief touch on the about rack space. I don't like to spend too much time on this. That's not why you're here. You want to know what it is that we're doing and what our fanatical support for AWS offering is. But just at a really high level, we have about 5,900 rackers um, globally. And you know, the majority, vast majority of those focus on support and technology. We have over 300,000 customers. Uh, over 10 data centers worldwide. We've got a, we're not just a, a, a um, public cloud provider and whatnot. We also have dedicated solutions and all those types of things. We have a good customer base, solid revenue, um, and more locally. And, and, and something we're very proud of is, you know, we're voted in as uh, number 11 best places to work last year, and I think we were. Um, similar or, or maybe number 12 this year. So we, we recognize and think our culture is something different. So uh, as an organization, we have a pretty solid vision. If you ask any racker, that's what we refer to ourselves as rackers. Um, if you ask any racker around what our vision is, they should be able to uh, say to you that we want to be recognized as one of the world's greatest service companies. And this really speaks to the approach that we're taking to delivering our managed services for AWS. So just to give you a quick little bit of background on you know, why we've taken this path um, of delivering fanatical support on AWS as a, as a cloud, you know, right back in 1998 is when we were founded as an organization. Um, we coined the term fanatical support, which you'll hear me say a, a thousand times probably during this, this call because it's just part of what we do. Um, is, uh, was born in 1999. Then really over time what we've done is we've, we've delivered our support capabilities on top of other people's technology platforms. So you know we partnered with Microsoft, we partnered with VMware in 2006 um, to develop you know managed services on top of VMware. One key thing that also happened in 2006 is we established our core values. Um, as an organization, and they're, they're a really strong part around what we deliver and how we treat our customers and, uh, you know, they're things like treating um, rappers like friends and family, um, substance over flash and fanatical support and, and committed to greatness and passion. So there's a lot, of, a lot of core values and they've lived from 2006 all the way through and they're a daily part of the way we operate as a business. Um, moving forward along the, the, the chronological timeline there, you know, in 2010 we uh, worked with NASA and we founded um, OpenStack as a, as a private cloud or as a um, cloud offering capability and we've been, we still have a number of developers, you know, uh, people who are dedicated to contributing to that open source product today and capability and our own public cloud which is still one of the largest that, that exists and I think the largest OpenStack cloud in the world is, is um, something that's a core part of our business. However, we kind of uh, realized that uh, we, we're not a pure technology company. That's not what we're about. We've always been around fanatical support. And so we actually did a little bit of a pivot and went, you know, yes, we're, we're big supporters of OpenStack, but really our strengths live, uh, live in um, delivering fanatical support to customers. So we went, well, you know what? We have thousands of people who are dedicated to support. Azure, AWS, all these other companies, they had thousands and thousands of developers um, focused on technology. Let's, let's combine those two things together. And that's really how the fanatical support for AWS piece came about from a strategic initiative um, for our organization. So in July this year, we announced our fanatical support for Azure. And in October this year, we globally announced our global um, availability or sorry, general availability for um, managed support or fanatical support for AWS in the US. And we announced that we were in beta in the international regions, which is where Australia falls under. 
So as you can see, it's a natural evolution. Delivering support on top of other people's platforms is actually a natural evolution for the way that Rackspace works as a company. So moving along to the next slide, here is, is really where we sort of iterate that we have been in the Gartner Magic Quadrant, in the, the Managed Hosting Magic Quadrant, um, for the leader in that space for I don't know how many years, consistently for many, many years. We are that top right-hand corner um, blue dot. Then obviously in the IIS space, AWS is by far the leader in that space as well. And so it seems like a really natural and, um, you know, I think we've our sales director coined the term um, good, uh, and I think best plus best equals better, which sounds kind of corny, but really what, what we're trying to sort of look here is we've got the best support offering in the market when it comes to managed hosting. And um, AWS has the best cloud technology platform. So it just makes sense that we bring those two products together. So we typically find that there's a number of use cases as to why we develop our products the way that we have or our service offering the way that we have. So we have a lot of, we've actually had over the last six to 12 months, customers reluctantly leaving us. So we'd have customers who say, we love fanatical support, we really do believe in it and we've enjoyed the, the pleasure of that experience, but when it comes down to it, our developers really want this technology platform being AWS, or we really need the breadth of the capability that the AWS platform has. And it's just got to a point where we're reluctant, but we have to leave. Um, you know, I was, I was speaking with a customer just the other day who has basically said, we, who has moved to AWS, but without our support because it wasn't available at the time. And they um, have indicated that they've they, they feel like they've been a little bit spoiled with the support that they've had from Rackspace, to the, which is our standard support, and having moved to just a pure AWS model have found it to be a completely different experience. So um, what we find is that customers come from a number of different perspectives. There's the infrastructure up perspective, which is the, you know, how do I migrate my infrastructure to AWS? I'm not sure how, what the best practice way of architecting it, you know, there's so many different options. How do I know what is the best way? How do I manage my infrastructure and the guest images and, and operating systems? And then there's the build shop component related to governance. Customers will be going, I actually can't tell you how much infrastructure I've got. And last month my bill was substantially more than I thought it should be, but I'm not sure how I can shut something down or keep it going and all those types of things. We then see the application down. So that's the infrastructure up perspective. I've got challenges with managing my infrastructure. Then we've got the, well, I've moved my application onto the cloud and I was expecting all these wonderful outcomes, but to be honest, it's a little bit, eh. And, and where it comes to with that is, you know, they've moved it to the cloud, but without leveraging the, the actual intricacies of things like object storage or auto scaling and understanding how to put all of that together and tie it into your application, you're not going to get all the benefits of the cloud just by moving your, your application into the cloud. So we, we have, you know, we help customers really leverage those benefits from an application perspective. The other two perspectives um, are business driven and security focused. So on the security side, you know, we are a long time um, uh, cloud player. We're very familiar with the objections for migrating to cloud and, and the main roadblocks for moving. Security has and continues to be one of those roadblocks. And so we built this offering with security at the core. It's not just a little add-on that we've decided to push on onto the end and sort of go, oh, let's let that little bit of firewalling or whatever it may be on the outside. We have built this with security as a core focus and piece. And to be honest, security is not my thing. In throughout my IT career, I have um, zoned out a fair bit when it comes to talking about security, but. Um, the stuff that we've done with security for our offering, which I'll take you through soon, is actually really, really cool. Um, so even if you don't really uh, get excited about security, this stuff is, is quite fun. Um, and then on the business-driven side, obviously we've got the, the uh, traditional things that you see for any sort of managed service. I don't want to have to hire and train up AWS people. In fact, there's a talent war going on and it's actually quite difficult to retain AWS talent um, in the market. So um, we instead then say, well, leverage our skills and capabilities for that. 
that, that, that requirement. So if you think of, you know, your environment today and, and your teams and the thought of, or if you've got teams, retaining those people, keeping them abreast of the 60 plus service offerings that AWS has and the multitude, multitude of combinations of those, it's actually a really difficult thing. Even experts at AWS struggle to be across all of those um, areas. So how can someone's team of one, three, five, ten people be across all of that? Whereas at Rackspace, um, as you'll see on our next slide, we believe that the human expert piece and the tooling and automation is what makes our piece different. So moving then down into some of the tooling and, and automation, um, I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail till we get to a couple of slides further on. But unlike some other service providers in the market, not only here in Australia but globally, we haven't just gone, ha, this AWS cloud is growing exponentially fast. I want in on some of that. Let's make some money. Um, and then basically take a whole heap of customers who say, I want AWS, put them onto AWS, and then go call me if you've got a problem. Instead, we've gone, okay, how can we turn this experience into a streamlined experience? How can we add value to the customer, not just in being able to respond to incidents and, and, and the human element, but what extra... Um, capabilities and tooling can we provide access to that delivers value. And so you'll see um, sh shortly I'll take you through some of the things we've done around logging and authentication and remote access into environments, which is all done in very much an AWS and Rackspace best practice way, so that those things are things you don't have to think about. We've developed a lot of capability and tooling that many experienced AWS or mature AWS customers have had to go and build themselves. So we've, we've taken that pain out so that we can add extra value into this process rather than just going, here, give us a call if something goes wrong. On the human expert side, we have over 180 certifications to date, which is, you know, AWS a little bit cagey on telling us too much, but we know that we're in at least the top 10% globally, and we suspect we're actually higher than that in terms of the number of certifications we have. We have a team of experts who um, traditionally within our business, we've moved a, a team of over 60 people who were focused on delivering DevOps capabilities on our internal cloud, and they've been refocused to deliver um, support and DevOps capabilities on the AWS platform. So they're already, you know, day dot, the moment we, we went into beta in the US for this, we already had over 60 people who were cloud savvy, experienced in automation and those types of things, and specifically cover a 24 by seven ship roster. So we have that, we can leverage our global strengths to be able to provide 24 by seven support with local account management and local expertise as well. So um, that's sort of how we sort of blend our, uh, we see that we, we sit in that intersection of technology and human expertise. Our automation is all around making things easier for the user um, and so forth. So now let's have a bit of a look at what the actual product offerings are. So we have a two service levels, uh, Navigator and Aviator. Navigator is really where we guide you on how best to leverage AWS. You get some of our tooling, um, and automation pieces, we've got things like cloud formation templates which help you provision infrastructure automatically and we give you access to our library of those templates. Uh, when you sign up for a Navigator account or for any Navigator or Aviator account, you will automatically um, get some uh, an account which has been pre-configured in a best practice way to leverage things like CloudTrail or AWS Config. Then you've got um, the aviator service level, which is really designed for a different type of, of support experience. So in that particular case, you're looking at um, getting all those benefits of Navigator, but also hands-on managed services. So we can log into your instances and troubleshoot and resolve issues. You get extra tooling. You get extra support in terms of when you come on board, we won't just let give you access to our library of templates, but we will customize those templates and generate new templates for you to specifically address your environment and make sure that the, the way that your environment is implemented on AWS suits your maturity level in terms of where you want to be in automation today and also gives you the opportunity to 
work with us over time to improve your automation to the ideal um, path going down the path, going into the future. So, um, if you can sort of think of, of, of your what your teams might be doing today uh, in terms of keeping up to date with what the best practices are and keeping up to what your infrastructure might look like on the cloud, um, we would be able to take that responsibility of staying up to date, providing best practice, um, architecting your environment for you to, to oh, on top of the AWS platform. So that's the sort of things that we're able to do with our service offerings. So moving on to the next slide, if we have a look at the technology side, so this is where I was talking to you around um, some of the tooling that we've got. So to start off with, when you sign up online and you create a, an account, it will be pre-configured with all of the Rackspace best practice capabilities. So this includes, as I said before, AWS um, Cloud Trail enabled, AWS Config, um, a whole heap of um, cloud formation templates that comply with best practice, this sort of thing. Um, from an identity and permission management or identity and access management perspective, we will federate or we, we, we provide you with a way to federate your users from the, from the Rackspace portal into the AWS management console. We make sure that um, it's, a, it's a smooth experience and that in a best practice way, there are actually no accounts that are sitting within your AWS, user accounts that are sitting within your AWS account, which means that it's instead using um, STS, which is the security token service, which is a temporary um, key service. So that basically, without going into too much technical detail, it's the best practice way of ensuring that if someone should get a token access to your environment, that's only temporary, um, and they, they won't be able to steal or leverage those credentials at another time. Um, there's a unified audit log, which means that every single activity that occurs within your AWS account or your Rackspace management account of that AWS account, um, anything that is logged by CloudTrail, anything that is logged by our services and tooling goes to a central location which you can then view within the console um, to see you know, across all of your accounts, all the activities that happened. You can filter those activities. It's a consolidated, unified um, audit log. In terms of, um, I've, I've mentioned before around the best practice cloud formation template, you get access to all of those. And AWS provides a um, tool called the AWS um, Trusted Advisor uh, product. And that gives some, some, a whole heap of checks around uh, security best practice from an AWS perspective, um, so security, performance, availability, and cost. I did very well then, by the way. I usually only get three of those four when I'm trying to remember them, so I'm impressed with myself for getting all four. Um, you obviously get all of those checks within that, um, within both of our service levels, but then in addition to that, we've built something called Rackspace Advisor. So this takes that best practice um, recommendation and capability to the next level. So where this goes, this actually um, takes it so that you can, we define what best practice is, and within the um, portal, you can see your environment and you can see all the recommendations against it and where you don't comply with our best practices and you can review that and choose to remediate or come in line with those best practices. Going forward, the roadmap for the product is actually to be able to provide you with guidance when, when something in your account changes, it can notify you to say, hey, it was set up this way in best practice and in fact something has changed and removed it away from best practice. Looking even further down the road, Matt, you'll be able to get to a point where our, our goal is to get to a point where you can say on these particular things, if they deviate from best practice, we want you to reverse it back to best practice and even be able to get to the point where you can write your own best practices and, and upload them to our system and then that will um, help manage that whole best practice way in an automated fashion. On the security side, um, the last piece here in, in terms of the tooling and technology, if you can imagine that you have um, a, uh, a situation where something goes wrong with your instance, automatically that will be um, raised as an incident within our ticketing system via a whole heap of AWS tools. Then um, a racker or, or if you need to gain access and you're under the aviator service level yourself, 
can log in and request access to that environment. What that will do is that will automatically provision a dynamic bastion service within your or a jump server within your VPC, so within your virtual private cloud, which will then um, have security groups only to the instances that you've requested access to. So you will be in a very secure way, every single activity and all of that automated provisioning is logged. So from a compliance or audit perspective, you have all of that information. And then you can um, gain access to the box through using a virtual smart key. So a two-factor authentication process to get credentials. It's an automatically generated credential process. Um, which then means that you don't have to um, uh, have, in, have credentials in your instances or on your servers or anything along those lines. And then, um, again, temporary so that if someone should gain access to it, it will automatically be deleted. When your access to the environment is complete, you've finished doing whatever it is you, you needed to do, you can then um, automatically, you can either manually say, yep, shut this down, and everything will be automatically um, cleaned up and recorded within your audit log, or it will uh, you expire after a certain period, or you can extend that period if you want to as well. So that's a really clever and best practice way of managing remote access and authentication to the environment. I'm conscious of, or conscious of time, so I'm going to speed through the last two slides here. The other element that we spoke of is the human expertise piece. So we've got um, a lot of, uh, as I mentioned, a team of at least 60, and that's growing weekly, um, dedicated individuals who are all certified and working on managing um, our AWS customers. In addition to that, we have people here um, in Australia who are certified and who are providing the local account management and technical expertise. Everybody gets a chance as a navigator and aviator level both get technical account managers. We, in both service levels, you get support for the AWS platform. So instead of ringing AWS, you, you would call us. Um, as part of the onboarding process for Navigator, you get a technical onboarding manager who say, here's the best way to, to move forward. In the aviator process, that technical onboarding manager sort of acts as a bit of a project manager for getting that the, the build process facilitated with our resources and your own. There's um, best practice architecture, so we provide you with hands-on design. We customize um, templates, CloudFormation templates and so forth to meet your specific requirements and make sure we get your environment up and running. The technical account manager will do a monthly account review, and that's that covers cost optimization and your, how you use reserved instances and things like that, along with um, performance and how best to, get to leverage all of the bits and pieces within the cloud within your account. Um, we will respond to, you can create custom CloudWatch uh, alarms and provide us with uh, the responses you want us to take for those and we will uh, leverage those and perform those actions on your behalf should something happen at 3 o'clock in the morning, whereas today you'd get that phone call. Um, and then finally, you can see down the bottom there a response time to, for um, requests and incidents that come through our, our portal. So moving along to the last slide, um, this is publicly available on our website. Uh, this is the pricing for both of those two service levels in US dollars, and the left-hand column is the AWS spend. So let's say your AWS spend today is $3,000, then if you wanted the Navigator um, service level, it would be $350, or if you wanted the Aviator one, it would be $2,250 US dollars. And likewise for each of those spends and bands that go up from there. So my next slide is the thank you slide. And I think I've managed to squeeze that just into the half an hour time slot. But thought I'd open things up. And um, if you've got some questions, please feel free to type them into the chat box there. And I will respond to them as, you, um, as they come through.